Right. You, was it the intro this week? Was it actually mine or? I think it's you. <laughs> yeah, because I think, um, I, I, yeah, uh, Tom did the <laughs> yeah. last one uh, for fiction. So this time it's Tom instead of Tom. Oh, good. That's not going to cause any confusion up. in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> it's good for you guys sound exactly the same. It's fine. What you don't, it's fine. What you don't know is this is actually a three person podcast. <laughs> and this is just Tom being bipolar. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. We've always been. It's a very <laughs> extreme condition. <laughs> We're in two separate suddenly... bodies, two separate locations, but we are the same being. I, fl- I flicked through many suggestions in my head. Didn't, didn't connect with Tom's thing at all. I just said, Is, is Matt an AI? Am I dead? And just like, <laughs> just like trying to figure out the, who's the odd one out. <laughs> and with that mild concerning revelation? <laughs> question marks? I don't know. Is this real anymore? <laughs> question mark, question mark, exclamation mark, question mark. Yes. <laughs> anyway, hi there, guys. Welcome back to Fact vs. Fiction. Uh, today is Fiction Week, and oh boy, if it's anything like last week, we promise it'll try and be shorter. <laughs> I just want it to end. <laughs> we got like 20 episodes of Tom's Jills to go through that we've had to double because he's cut them down in half. <laughs> so if nothing else, this podcast will end... Be- probably before we finish his books. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it's just going to be week after week of bags and kelpies. <laughs> there is anyway, no way to do it. That's not bad. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> That's good content. <laughs> <laughs> well, bags and kelpies. myself a kelpie. <laughs> anyway, I am Corby, although my real name is not that. They called because we've got two Toms in here. And uh, I am joined by my three limitations in life. <laughs> we have... <laughs> I let you reach new depths of depravity, it's fine. That's if anything, an increase. (laughs) I'm better the chains of your morals, it's great. And that is John. Hey. Welcome welcome to the show. That's as good as as intro I'm going to get, so I'm going to leave it there. To my west, I have Tom, the the actual. I am surrounded by dice as we speak. I was going to say, are we dice now? (laughs) (laughs) Hmm. And to my southeast... We have Matt. I promise not to make any comments that could be misconstrued and to permanently not dig a hole. <laughs> you know what? Just before we actually get into the important Let's stuff, I just wanted to ask. Can't keep. <laughs> yeah, I'm that. I just wanted to ask before we get into the main content. Uh, since Tom said he's surrounded by dice, what die would you be? I literally was thinking of that question. <laughs> D12. Hmm. That's a confident. Uh... D12. Answer. Answer. Yeah. Any particular reason that you identify as a D12? It's large, it's chunky, but I also like the, the fact that it's uh, the multiple sides of various... Uh, like, you know how it is, like, I think a D20, what is it? D20 is triangles, but I think a D12 is multiple five sides, which is quite pretty. Pentagonal! <laughs> yes. <laughs> Where are you? Oh. What, about, there what about everyone else? I would be a I'm D4. I'm going to a D8. Yeah. Mm. I will say D10 for me is a close second, but I do mm. like D12s. I would have said it, I would have said I'm a D4 as well, but because everyone looks at me with disdain. Oh, I just find that I <laughs> have four <laughs> levels of energy, and when people get near me, I basically cause them to hurt themselves for standing on me. Did we all? So just... What you're saying, Matt, is you're a plug. <laughs> yeah, so I'm a plug socket. <laughs> Speaking of plugs, please follow our subs- follow our social. <laughs> Can I just ask? Did we all deliberately not choose D20s so as not to seem arrogant? I it never even sprung to mind because never have I rolled on a dice, got top result, and then celebrated it in like transferring over into something in life. <laughs> I mean, I was I was almost cocky enough to pick D10 because I mean, obviously that's all the Cthulhu stuff, isn't it? So. Uh, <laughs> let's pick the D6 actually. So none of us think we're average because D6 is a basic bitch, and while we love it, it is everywhere. <laughs> the basic bitch of dice. Can't escape the D6. I know oh, people there is like something that, I'm immensely satisfying about rolling like 10 D6 for a fireball. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. No, oh, okay. yeah. Nice talk. <laughs> God damn it, this is fiction week. <laughs> exactly. The real dice camera action where we talk about dice for five hours. <laughs> what I like about this face of the dice <laughs> is that it's got a 20 on it. It is subtly different from the other dice face, which has a different number on. This is the way the dice work. This one is red, but this one is blue. Oh, and sometimes it's two of them mixed together, which makes that colour I forgot. Purple. Oh, purple. Thank you. What the... 
<laughs> Did you do GCSE or even oh, go to primary, primary school, school art? How do you live? <laughs> do you Price even color? Every day. As my voice cracks as no, I say he's, color. He's, he's just got oh. dog vision. He just can't see people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. God, anyway. Oh. All I see are greys. <laughs> the aliens are everywhere. Gonna they can, see, the they can see a lot of yellows, I think. Oh, that's nice. That explains aliens why, you know, most of my room looks piss-coloured. Could be the piss, though. I thought it was just the fact you were in it, yeah. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> when we last left on Fiction Week, uh, memes were made. <laughs> memes, memes were made and memes were had. Are they as good as <laughs> Panjandra <laughs> from last week? The, I don't oh. know, but do you remember the pork knuckling incident? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> it was a bit ham-fisted. Anyway. Hey. <laughs> um, uh, I'm not proud of myself. Anyway, Tom, would you like to give us a brief overview of I would say what happened, but not a lot happened. We were building yes. up to a, we were building up to a plot where someone was po probably going to die. It, it was a lot of riffing and correct. not a lot of progress. <laughs> <laughs> there was a man who had, who had killed people who definitely had a gun and occasionally had some drugs, and that was his character. <laughs> but he wore the shit that I'm not a drug <laughs> dealer, so we know he's not a drug dealer. And oh yeah, there was also the there was also the shutting girl that was on 4chan and hacked into the system. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> and many bags were thrown. Oh god, fucking all... the bag throwing. Sorry. I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, take, take Welcome us away. to bag gate. Yes. Take us away into it, Tom. <laughs> Please. We will now go back to the world of One Small Town, episode two, The End of Summer Party. I've Previously. Uh, I'm going to do a quick recap of uh, the key points from last episode. Ben, Simon and Elliot's uh, old uh, best friend, came back into town. He had moved away previously with his parents to Ireland, but his parents divorced, and that's why he came back to town with his mother. I oh, told them they divorced. No, yeah. we just, you just oh, no, skipped over that part. <laughs> I, guess, I remember the other girl's mom up and leaving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she just left. <laughs> Amy, Amy's mother is gone. No one knows where. David killed her. Child abandonment is a fun plot device. <laughs> oh <my laughs> yes. God, that's a quote. <laughs> I'm sure Elliot I've seen that. made a maybe. bad yes. first impression with Ivy by literally throwing his bag at her. It was revealed there is tension between Jenny and Amy. And everyone was gearing up for an end of summer party. Oh, and there's Drake and David, who are drug dealers and... Who, no, who are literally well, gearing up. They've well, got gear. Yeah. This is self. <laughs> they are literally murderers as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, quickly, just, I'm not trying to interrupt you, uh, Tom, but I know that at some point you mentioned these episodes had particular names. I don't think you mentioned the name of the first episode. The name of the first episode was One Small Town. The same name oh, as... Okay. Okay, alright, cool. Yes. The last cool. one's gonna be one empty town. town. One empty town. <laughs> All of them are dead. Drake and Josh. It's, Drake and Josh. This <laughs> episode a lot of this town ain't big enough for the two of us because it's one small town. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please say the party ends in a western style standoff. <laughs> oh. But there's only one gun, so. Right. Uh, too much reason. Okay, uh, 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 my bad. <laughs> So we basically open on this episode with a montage of all our main characters getting ready for this party. Uh, it's a fairly uh, basic montage, just people leaving their house. The only significant things that happen is both Simon and Rachel uh, forget their house keys and leave their home door unlocked. Oh no! And Drake and David have a little uh, a little tete a tete, and. David reminds Drake in no uncertain terms that if he fails to sell any drugs this evening, he will shoot him. Wait, what? <laughs> what? That's, that's pretty tall on. <laughs> you have to sell one drug. <laughs> At least one field drug. drug. <laughs> you must sell a drug this evening. <laughs> Does paracetamol count? No. no. <laughs> what about Lorette? No? In fact, the, the exact quote David says is, Right now, you've got no money and a load of drugs. When you get back, it had better be the other way round. Why he is he so edgy? David and pretends to shoot him. <laughs> Why is he so edgy? He's uh, just so edgy. Uh, uh, sharp corner is like a D4. <laughs> <laughs> like like a, a D4. D4. I've, never, <laughs> I've never met a David this edgy before. I've met a lot of Davids. This is weird. A very common, very common name. Mm. Davids and Toms. Well, apparently, every, almost everyone's supposed to know at least one Dave. Yeah. 
Anyway, once the uh, end credits are over, we get the payoff for the prank that was set up at the end of last episode. If you remember, Simon and Ben called Elliot and told him to come dress right. as an animal. Oh god, he's coming with that um, hippopotamus tea cozy on his head. And he comes wearing a hippopotamus tea cozy on his head. To be fair, Stylish. it's 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 not that bad because it's a, it's a costume you can just get rid of like that. Yeah, you can literally just pull yes. it off. So. You just turn up and just go, whoa! Fuck. And or you can <laughs> pull it off. Like, hey, that guy's really pulling that exactly, off. It's not exactly. a look I thought he could, but the he's latest working on it. Trend. <laughs> still, still just caps and fucking tea cozies are in fashion this summer. You just, <laughs> All the kids are wearing tea cozies. You just need, yeah, just need to fake them out and convince them you're for, for some sort of centre of fashion. Like, have you ever been to Copenhagen, darling? And just walk by and it's like, that guy's cool. Just, <laughs> just don't, don't acknowledge the fact that he's wearing the hat. But of course he sees that Ben and Simon are not dressed as animals, realises it was a prank, and he gets a bit uh, upset. Simon then tells him not to be a hypocrite. Hey! That's terrible. <laughs> he's been thinking of that for the past three hours. <laughs> yes. He's just been waiting on that. Because all Simon has done so far is just hang about and make sarcastic comments. I mean, he, we, are, we established he is a ghost, so... Well, yeah. that explains how he knew that um, Elliot was going to have the hippopotamus tea cozy. He just walked over through the wall and took a gander. <laughs> oh, before I go any further, I need to tell you about the end of Summer Party itself. Why is he stealing a goose? Yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> it's sorry, <hard>. what? <laughs> what? I can't tell if you're making a weird comment on a story because you also looked out your window. It's so <laughs> not so not it did look like you were stealing no. goose. Oh, so this is no, just it's, taking it's, place it's, outside it's, your it's, window it's, right it's, now. It's good. It was just a weird leap of logic in my mind because uh, uh, the he, he said he walked through his hat, walked through his wall, and took a gander. I was like, why is he taking a goose? Oh, <laughs> that was just in my. I, <laughs> that was just in my head. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's no goose even going on. It's just peacocks, as far as the eye can see. Not for long. <laughs> <laughs> I just need to mention the end of summer party itself isn't really a party in any way. Because I wrote this with a mind that it could be made, therefore I would not have much budget for it. <laughs> this is just <laughs> teens hanging out in a park drinking, basically. Okay. That's what uh, the party consists of. So it's a, it's a party. <laughs> Wait, it's... You, you were holding on for this to be a live action thing. Yes. I mean, didn't you oh, say no, I'm fully week, down to do it. You said if, last week um, this was like designed as a thing you could feasibly film, wasn't it? Yes, that is correct. Uh, and that's so there's a lot of cuts in like the first few episodes where I tried and deliberately make it so it would be easier to film, which is why we won't see any parents for a while. <laughs> Not just because dead. one of them ran out on their child, just because <laughs> I didn't know any adult another, actors who could be in it. Another one is dead. I remember that one. Because after the evil exposition, the other one turned around and was like, well, you killed your parents, so... Yes, that is, uh, that is also true. <laughs> David did kill his parents. <laughs> uh, yeah, if I could go back and rewrite this, uh, I would make it so there was maybe like a band performing in the park, and that's why everyone's hanging out there. But alas, the script itself just has teens hanging out in a park drinking. Classic Oakley. What a party. Yeah, that, that, that is very Oakley, to be fair. It's incredibly Oakley, it's depressing. <laughs> So, Elliot is standing with Simon and Ben with a hippopotamus tea cosy on his head, when who should walk up but Ivy? And Mike, Ethan and Jenny. Why hasn't Don't you he look taken like it a... off? <laughs> Why has... He's just gone, He's oh, just... you guys fooled me, and just kept it on. <laughs> the hippopotamus <laughs> is one with me now. It is part of my being. <laughs> Behold, as he... I turn on like a kettle. Shh. <laughs> Basically, just before he has a chance to even take it off, uh, Ivy and, right. and her friends come around the corner and then see him wearing it. Uh, basically cementing, in Ivy's mind, this guy is fucking weird. Oh, yeah, he's wearing a teapot and cosy on his teapot. Sure. Is that the one we want... <laughs> Did she want to touch his butt? I can't remember. I don't think those words were used, they... but, you know, he got, she got gagged. They so did agree to watching. exchange phone numbers at this quote-unquote party. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no. He did bag her, so I guess. Tag and bag, yep. And then as uh, Ivy and her friends walk away, they discuss the fact that Ben is very attractive. Very Mike hot. Ethan then him? says, <laughs> he Mike cannot Ethan tell agrees. which one is more attractive. <laughs> he protests too much. 
It feels like Ben's got a fucking too much. It feels like Ben's got a fucking glamour on. Like I feel like if, someone, got if, I, asked, if I asked, if I asked, yeah, if I asked someone to describe Ben to me, they'd just tell me he's attractive. They wouldn't be able to describe what eye color he was, what kind of hair. It's some sort of magical bullshit <laughs> going on where you so can't hot. see him, he, but you know he's, he's attractive. Too attractive. He, he <laughs> looks attractive. He's got glamour oh. on. The glamour makes him look like. Whatever that person thinks is attractive, that's he's, what he looks like. He's them. so attractive that as soon as you look away from him, you forget the, how attractive he is because nothing silence, will ever man. live up to that again. I'm going to say, why do we sound it make, make it sound like he's part Faye? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's what I'm getting at. It's weird. That's Ben's a, slightly elven. Add that to the parallel supernatural headcanon you guys are making up as we go along. <laughs> like, whenever you're looking at him, you just forget everything about how hot, except that he's super hot, and then when you look away, that's all you remember. Moving on to the next scene, Amy is on her way to the park to meet up with Rachel when Drake intercepts her and tries to sell her drugs. Is he a fighter jet now? <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea of, but I love the idea of intercept as a word. You want to buy some drugs? <laughs> Christ. Please, I'm a sell a unit of drug. What, what I love about this exchange is Drake uses the same logic that Pennywise uses at the start of It, where he says, uh, basically... Uh, I've got some drugs down here, you want to come? <laughs> Georgie, Georgie, I've got some dope cocaine down here. Get in the drain. <laughs> oh. Uh, basically, Drake says, you look like you're going somewhere important. Amy says, yeah, away from you. Drake says, that's not fair, you don't know who I am. Amy says, I don't want to. Drake then says, too late, my name's Drake Delton, pleased to meet you. He sounds like a low-budget superhero. <laughs> you, already know, you already know me, and that's, uh, thus the trap is sprung. <laughs> Shit, now that I know his name, I have to socially interact with him, because that's how it works. I'm Drake Delton, the superhero. My power is to sell you drugs only if you accept them. Drake Delton, yes. Jesus. Drake Delton! Uh, he persists with trying to make a sale, but Amy uh, says no. She tries to walk away, he grabs her shoulder, and then she spins around and punches him right in the face. Doesn't like to punch hey. people. Yeah, Amy is woman. hitting a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she is worried she might have done some serious damage, but then he opens his eyes and basically says, you'll regret doing that. And then she runs the rest of the way away from him. <laughs> like, so, a, like a thing in the Telltale games, Drake will remember this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So which one's which again? Dave, David's the madman with the gun and Drake is the, the singer who killed Victor. That... <laughs> yes, that is correct. Yeah. David is the madman with a gun who killed his parents. Drake is the madman without a gun who killed his brother. Gotcha. Which, which one's the edgelord? Edgelord right. David. The, the two edgelords right. of this town. Edgelord. Speaking of David, we then cut to David trying to make his sale. He intercepts Rachel on her way to the park and... Remember what you said just a moment ago about the intercepting and just suddenly yeah. stepping out? That is quite literally what David does. Yeah, he's okay. behind the tree for like yeah. four hours. It's by a, a, a bridge going into the park. Oh, I know he exactly what bridge it is. He says boo and steps out of the shadows. I, like, I there, are, the there are a lot of, the like, there are lots of shadows like in that ghost. bridge. Like I was, was going to say I prefer the idea that no, scary like boo, boo, normal like a, boo. I was going to say, I prefer the idea that he falls out of the tree on top of her. <laughs> like a pound of her. Well, as, he, as he falls down, just, Pano, would you like to buy some... Just, uh, some... <laughs> Hello, would you like to buy some... <laughs> it's, a, it's an attempt at a scary boo, but uh, Rachel is unfazed by it. More just confused, bemused... I am unfazed by your boo. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are you doing? Uh, he makes his sales pitch to her. And though she is wary at first, ultimately she in fact agrees and buys some drugs off him. Is anyone else imagining um, David and Drake in like business suits, like as in like they're going into a business meeting and they're making a sales pitch <laughs> with like the pros and cons of taking the drugs? He has like one of those pull down. Um, if you buy drugs from me. Projectors. <laughs> <laughs> he falls down out of the tree and just has like one of those sticks and he's pointing at the benefits. That's, the That's why his was successful. The other one didn't do that. <laughs> Drake didn't come prepared. I'm not sure what I imagine like David dressed as, but I just imagine him bugging around the place like a bad AI in a video game. Like he's just I, I can't well, imagine him as a real person. 
we did establish he's wearing a t-shirt that says I am not a drug dealer. <laughs> that was it. He's wearing that. But he's got Every a business he through over the top of that, but the shirt's undone, so you can just kind of see the shirt that says I am oh, not a drug dealer underneath God. it. Not when they he's start. got the tie that's not fastened all the way up. Yeah. It starts about here. So he's basically Jesus. a Miami business salesman. He's a he's a head of a startup in California. Let's let's continue. <laughs> or, uh, you know, the pyramid scheme. They do, they do want to leave and start new lives, and where better to deal drugs than in California? Nice. <laughs> you joke. Anyway, uh. <laughs> so the answer is Florida, by the way. Yeah. For anyone wishing to start up now. In case you're wondering where the best place to start up a entrepreneurial drug business, it's Florida. I mean, if we're talking ecstasy, I mean, uh, let's see, if it, uh, what was it called again? Uh, uh, Vancouver is, was, until a couple of years back, the ex XD capital of the world. So if you want somewhere in the Western oh. world there's a lot of drugs, that's good. Now I think we're probably giving the wrong end of the stick and we should stop advertising drug capitals. <laughs> yes. Well, there, I am happy to tell you, the drugs in these scripts are never named. <laughs> I, was so... gonna, I, I was going to ask that in a couple of minutes. Are they, have you actually do, picked a drug? These are I think it was implied it was drugs. cocaine because he dropped a little sachet. Yeah, I mean, but that could I, be... They're in pill well, we form. We established they were mayonnaise packets, man. Yeah. And <laughs> yes, they were stolen mayonnaise ketamine. packets from a hotel buffet. <laughs> that was it. Scene four then gets underway and the party, quote-unquote party, is now in swing. Each friendship group is hanging out, drinking. Ben, like no Amy, little Simon. circles in the park. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. No one socialises. It's just three. Different... They just stick with their original friendship groups. <laughs> and hang well, out. It's not like every front. party I've ever been to. Ben has an interesting quote about uh, the amount of beers that he's drunk. He says, "The first beer doesn't make that much difference, but after the next few, it's like boom, bang, gazoo." Yes, that you is how that I accurate? describe my consumption of alcohol. <laughs> Clearly this Matt... Wait, this was the one that went to Ireland. He should know how to drink. Yeah. It is actually... He is having... He has had more um, beers than the other two and is holding it well. And that becomes uh, a sort of thing. They decide to make it into a competition. Who can drink the most beers the fastest? Oh, oh, elves. There's a lot of... In there. Yeah, there's a lot of, um... I'm totally gazooped right now. <laughs> there's a uh... lot of uh, banter where they just mispronounce words a lot, and that's just silly jokes. That's, and then... that's just us. That's literally that's just this us on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. And then Simon shows that he's actually a bit of a dark horse as he uh, wins that competition. I mean, he is a Kelpie. He, he, they're part horse. <laughs> <laughs> Elsewhere, Ivy, Jenny, and Mike Ethan are hanging out in their own social circle. Please tell me Jenny brought her laptop. Is she, she hacking not. the internet? Oh. That was perfect, yep. Yeah. What's she Mike doing Ethan then? <laughs> did bring a bag with some bottles of vodka in it. Because if you remember, his dad works in an alcohol shop. <laughs> Is his dad still hunting him? <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot I started that, sorry. <laughs> hey, Mike, what's that red dot over your head? It's just my dad. <laughs> oh, dad. Stop hunting me. <laughs> it's not cool anymore. It's character development, son. <laughs> now stand there while I blow your brains out. Uh. As Mike Ethan takes out the bottles of vodka, one of them, however, rolls down a hill and Jenny goes to go and fetch it. As she does, she then sees Rachel hide it behind a tree, take a look around and take the drugs that she has bought off David. How conspicuous so Jenny, is the look no. around? Is it yeah. like like the like the pause in like a game where they stop and then just look both sides really wide? Wait <laughs> a minute! I heard something. I think back. there's someone here with an arrow sticking out of the shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> must have Jenny, been the wind. Jenny can see one of the spotting indicators flip up in her eyes and just the duck that? down. Or just like, Wing! listen to my, the Metal Gear Solid noise. <laughs> Metal Gear Solid. There's a box next to her which she just pulls over. Her. Yeah. I like how she just holds up the drugs packet, it just kind of disappears. So it's like a status effect. <laughs> just using a consumable. <laughs> yeah, this is a space. Uh. She just walks out and they're just sniffing the nose and is like, where did that bag go? But of course that is an interesting position for Jenny to be in, as Rachel is the best friend of Amy, her rival. Oh. She can intercept that and shoot the ammunition may come into play. Why is everyone intercepting them? There's a lot of interception going on, yeah. 
Not to be confused with Inception. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I just love Christopher Nolan's film Interception. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's just a movie about other people trying to stop the movie. We then uh, catch up with Rachel and Amy. They meet up with each other and hug and start drinking. There's not much else that happens there before we cut right. back to the boys, Elliot, Ben and Simon. I was going to say, which set of boys? <laughs> the boys, the lads. The boys, boys. boys or the drug boys? The beer boys, boys not the lads. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, exactly. The beer, right. there's the... The beer boys and the drug dudes. So don't get me started on the guys. <laughs> Why does this sound like a turf war? Some <laughs> guys and the drug dudes. <laughs> Simon is now very drunk, uh, and voices his opinion that they should drink with each other more often. Which is he's pretty much done a turnaround from how he was feeling in the last episode, where he didn't even want to come to this party originally. Has he ever drunk before? Uh, yes, but not much. Right, because okay. so that's a weird statement to make. If you like, say we should drink together more, it's like. You've never drunk before. You, you don't hang out with these people anyway. <laughs> also, can ghosts get drunk? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay, yeah. I'm glad we've solved that mystery. Why not? There's a mate. mate there's spirits. a reason why they call it spirits. Oh fuck you. Oh. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I stopped because I knew someone would. Yeah. <laughs> so I made an effort with that joke. Why you just barked it out? God damn it. <laughs> You didn't have the smooth subtleties of my voice, you amateur. Mm. It's just the Sorry, r- the, the epiphany came to me and I couldn't, it, I couldn't contain it. Just vomited Much out your like mouth. Ghost. Mm. <laughs> so then Ivy, Jenny and Mike Ethan decide to go and find Ben, Simon and Elliot, as they did agree to meet up earlier. And at this point, Mike Ethan only now questions why Elliot was wearing a hippo hat. And yes, yeah, how long have they Elliot been has still been wearing it the whole time. <laughs> Maybe his head's yeah. old. How long have they been in the park at this point? The timeline is unclear. <laughs> as other I mean, motivations. The, they're pissed, so they don't know either. I so. think we should assume that there is some time passing between each scene. <laughs> Otherwise, it's maybe, going I was gonna say within like, like 10 minutes. <laughs> an hour and a half, maybe, has passed. Yeah. So basically, those two groups of friends arranged to meet up. We merge into one. Uh, so everyone's drinking, everyone's having quite a nice time. Which can un- inevitably mean something is about to go wrong. Uh, Amy uh, and Rachel I've been waiting for. are walking away from the park, and they are having some drunken banter with each other. They're sort of doing sort of p- playful, jokey insults, uh, you know, playfully shoving each other. We do that you when do. we're not pissed. I mean, you just punch me whenever you see me. <laughs> That's That's a mark it's, in my yeah, face it's, your it's fist how we hurts. greet each other, just with a big old punch to the face. The first, the first right, big the... punch to the face after lockdown is going to hit differently. <laughs> <laughs> Matt has genuinely slapped me in the face before. Have I? Yeah. When? Uh, once at download, you asked me if you could. I was like, yeah, all right. And you just did. Fair enough. That's probably drunk. I was going to say, I know the, how that sentence is going to end. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Amy and Rachel are having this uh, conversation. Then Amy notices there is something a little bit off about Rachel. Uh, because Rachel is on drugs. I would say, is it the bloody nose? <laughs> the big eyes, the bloody nose, the fact she's turned yellow. <laughs> the fact that she's, blowing, she she's floating off the air. She's got the white eyes are just billowing black. from her mouth. She's speaking with I'm the sorry. voice of the devil. I'm Wind honestly starting to wonder which... So at this point, I'm honestly starting to wonder if, if it's not Amy that's actually on the drugs. Uh, Amy... Why do you look like Lucifer? <laughs> no reason. Are those cat legs? <laughs> Where did this toad come from? <laughs> Suspiciously big. <laughs> so Amy uh, voices her concern. She tells Rachel, "You look a bit uh, funny looking." And then Rachel uh, just laughs it off, says, "Not as funny looking as you." Gives her another playful push, but pushes too hard, and pushes Amy Kills down her. a short flight of steps. Oh, oh no! <laughs> this is this is turned to a murder. Not as funny looking as you. <laughs> <laughs> Amy no, hits her, head kills her on the I was step. joking. <laughs> You know when Rachel... we said somebody was gonna die? <laughs> I didn't think they die like this. She this just lost the... her mum for God's sake, Tom. What <laughs> are you is... doing? This is as yeah. This, this is, is as dumb as the scene Amy. where the girl. This is dumber than the scene in another where the girl gets impaled by her umbrella. I'm assuming she's not the one impaling herself a bit. 
No, she fell down the stairs and landed on the spiky point of her umbrella. <laughs> Where was the umbrella in relation to the stairs? The bottom. I don't. I need to just find it and send you it because I don't fucking <laughs> know, know what how I meant. it works. <laughs> anyway, uh, Tom, do continue. Yeah. I want to hear what happens. Uh, so Rachel, uh, who, who is taken aback by this, she did not realise how close to the steps they were or how hard she was hitting, runs down to check on Amy. Amy's head is bleeding and she is unconscious. Stairs. Oh no, when? she's landed on David's gun. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly, give her more drugs. So then, another boy runs up. This is someone we haven't met before, a new character. He introduces oh, himself as Harry O'Daniels. He says he saw what happened. Harry O'Daniels, I'm from Ireland. I was come down to Pixie Ben. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 my mind quite no. defined. A pixie, a kelpie, and a hippo man. That's all that's, that's, all that's gonna happen now. Yeah? Get in the bag, we'll get out of here fast. <laughs> sorry. I do not mention in the script whether he is actually Irish or just has an Irish sounding name. But... You called him Harry O'Daniels. It is a very Irish sounding name. <laughs> I, I'm part Irish, and that physically, like, that's made me feel inferior. <laughs> I've, I feel like, yeah, I, I named him after a pub. <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty boring, man. Anyway, let's continue. Yeah, you want to go down to the Harry or Daniels? Have a quick pint. <laughs> did, did, did he smuggle himself over in Ben's bag or something when he moved back? He's just been latched onto Ben's back like a gremlin. <laughs> The glamour will hide me. <laughs> oh. oh, Christ. Is that what yes. Ben actually looks like? And he's actually Harry O'Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> you can never know my secret. <laughs> I, don't, I can't full leprechaun with it, I'm sorry. Oh, never oh. go full leprechaun. <laughs> oh, so, man. yeah, uh, Harry says he saw the altercation that happened. Uh, and that as what Rachel we're is. Now, an altercation. <laughs> yeah, an altercation. <laughs> And offers to help. Rachel uh, uh, picks up Amy and just puts her arm over the shoulder and says she's got a spare key to Amy's house, so can take her home. Uh, Harry gives some bad medical advice and says this. Irish, please. <laughs> yes, in Irish. In Irish. Oh, do you want to PM it to one of us and we can read it? <laughs> she's hit her head on a wall. She'll be fine. <laughs> That kind of shit happens all the time in Ireland. <laughs> Don't worry, just get more alcohol. She'll be fine. Not only does he say that, he actively uh, discourages calling an ambulance. He hits her head against the wall more. <laughs> eh, she'll recover in no time. <laughs> Harry says that he thinks the best thing for her would be to take her home so she can rest. So Amy uh, never... is taken by Rachel and Harry back to her house. You know the one thing you don't do after someone's got a concussion? You don't let them go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I underlined in my notes, in capital letters, bad medical advice. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> this is not how you treat a head wound. So they go off in the direction of Amy's home. Then we cut to behind a nearby uh, large car and see that Drake is there. Just he has also seen this. Looking through the window. <laughs> <laughs> They've got tinted windows and he's just peeking out with a pair of binoculars. <laughs> he's gone the wrong way around. <laughs> Drake is rapidly remember, becoming um... inept in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> of course, they remember, Drake uh, has already uh, met Amy and does not like her because she refused to buy drugs from him. Also, yeah, Drake and David are older than the rest of them, aren't they? Mm, By a few years, like yeah. Three years, yeah. Uh, I, I know Harry O'Daniels is probably the same age, but he, he, in my mind, he's 35. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get over Harry O'Daniels. <laughs> I can't. Does he still look as useful as the rest of them? It's just that he's 35. <laughs> when he said the rest of them, I thought you meant the Irish. <laughs> he is. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> also, the fact that Dave, that Drake is older than them and sat watching them from behind a car. Wow. <laughs> so many negative connotations to that. That's something Matt would do. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
But there's one thing that Drake does next, which I don't think Matt would do. The final uh, line of um, stage directions from this scene say that Drake is holding a packet of drugs and thinking hard. <laughs> what do you think he's yeah, thinking about? These are drugs. <laughs> these are the drugs that I must sell. And that is going to be where we're calling it for this episode. Mm. Oh, shit. That's I'm the, the drugs episode the drugs with me. <laughs> in the next uh, Fiction Week, we will come back and finish off episode two and see where all that resolves. Do you guys right. have some predictions? Harry O'Daniels is going to be the main villain. That's a fun one. Okay. What that's, about... that's, a, that's a yes. <laughs> yeah. He's Look a guy who can look He knows. <laughs> I mean, like, he, he literally came out of nowhere. <laughs> and he's also name. a leprechaun. It's, it's just the name that caught us all. <laughs> <laughs> it's Mr. Harry O'Daniel. Because you've had, you've had some pretty much fairly generic and normal names, and then you just come out with that. <laughs> I, well, consider after Mike Ethan, I thought it'd be Ethan Mike, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm his brother, Ethan Mike. <laughs> Come with me to my double-barreled mansion. The, pro- the, the problem is, I, the I call Mike it a mansion Ethan, house. The problem is for Mike Ethan. I, it always makes it makes in my mind sounds like my Keith man. <laughs> oh, get up, my Keith man. Uh, That's just my Keith man. <laughs> Keith, why don't you say hello? We need to write a list of what actually we've actually said about certain characters. I feel like we need to take notes. <laughs> we do. I need to go back and listen to this so I can understand. Oh, oh that was good. That was good, though. Yeah. Oh. Is there anything that's confusing or you want me to clarify right now before we move <laughs> on? Yes, where did Harry please come from? We'll see. Where did he emerge from? You just heard a just, war. Just the just river war. He, he's <laughs> at the head of the Kelpies, Tom. He emerged out the river. <laughs> he's going to take more of them. That, They're I, not I going gonna, to Amy's house. Because <laughs> I was going to say, the most sus as fuck thing is he appeared out of the car that Drake was hiding behind. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine, can you imagine Drake, Drake just shit himself? Just like, oh, <laughs> it's like, oh no, I picked him up high place. I'm surprised that like all the bad stuff seems to happen to one character so far. Yeah, Amy, why are you so mean to Amy? <laughs> so what's happened to Amy? Because I can't quite Who is Amy what? based on? Who do you no hate one. that you have based this character <laughs> on? Well, uh... No one that he can say on this podcast. Tell us afterwards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, I think uh, my thought process writing was when we first meet Amy, she is very abrasive and a bully and kind of mean. And so I just threw some bad stuff at her to make the audience a little more sympathetic to her. Not to teach uh, her a lesson because not, you actually not despise until, who you based it on. <laughs> her to, until she's good again or something like that. <laughs> yeah. So that's, you try to make her a The American way. Horror Story model. They introduce you to someone horrible, then just make terrible shit happen to them so that you end up feeling sorry for them somewhat. But I can confirm bad stuff will happen to the others in due course. I can oh, we... thank fuck for that. <laughs> what's, what's worse? Are they worse than being pushed down the stairs by your best friend? And then given bad medical advice from bad. a mystery having, Irishman? <laughs> having your single mother walk out on you, then getting pushed down the stairs by your high best friend <laughs> is a pretty bad night. <laughs> yeah. I feel like yeah. that is like the same fucking low night. Point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it, was to look after me. Oh. it wasn't traumatizing, it was just bad. <laughs> oh. Right, Tom, anime time. Oh, who fucking boy. I hope you're prepared for this, because I sure shit ain't. Um... How was your 2am research? <laughs> oh, it was enlightening. <laughs> so much so that I made a tweet about it. That's how enlightening it was. <laughs> So, yeah, for those of you that, for, like, the two of you that follow me on Twitter that are listening to this, hopefully, uh, th- yes, this is the week I was on about, and I, the one I teased last week. Two in the morning, I was watching a show about sexual terrorism. Huh. Now, oh, before I go like on... you've heard about it before. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> I was going to say, now, before I go on, what do you think sexual terrorism enable- it means? Enables? <laughs> <laughs> Both. What do you think it enables, and what do you think it involves? I can't um, say that on the podcast. Uh, sorry. <laughs> oh, you have to meet our. We've also our just lost our family-friendly rating. <laughs> we never had one. I swear, like God, there's no tomorrow. Oh no, this is just this is just wrong. It's not. Do you really uh, say I swear like God? <laughs> I swear like God. 
which means not at all. And God wants you to know that he fucks. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> God canonically fucks. Remember when Angel, Angel Gabriel was outside Mary's door, like, oh, Joseph, I need to tell you something. Don't go in there uh, for a bit. Uh, <laughs> it's magic, it's okay. <laughs> oh. But yes, as I was saying, what do you think sexual terrorism involves? Is it where some a, a, a group of people with a certain set of ideals are like, please meet our demands, otherwise we're going to have sex with you? <laughs> Without consent. Thank you, Matt. No, no. <laughs> Uh, no, otherwise, we're going to have sex with each other mm. with consent. Mm. The sexiest terrorism of all. <laughs> okay, to clarify, is this sexual terrorists or sexual freedom fighters? Because I need to figure out how I feel about this. Um, sex well, sales other than horny. <laughs> <laughs> Did your room always have that much wood, John? <laughs> no, I, I was going to say, they, they label. Well, the government labels them as terrorists, obviously, but they see themselves as freedom fighters because the concept of dirty jokes and everything else is being oppre oppressed. Is that the right yeah. word? Yes, yeah. oppressed, right repressed, yeah. either yeah. or. Yeah. yeah, they're repressing dirty jokes. Suppressed, like impressed. So, uh, I should say before we start, I teased this last week, but I am wanting to talk about uh, Sheena Meta, a boring world where the concept of dirty jokes don't exist. And yes... I said I was watching a show about sexual terrorism, and there was that one guy on the Twitter that knew exactly what show I was watching, so... There was this one. Shout yeah. out to that guy. <laughs> anyway, uh, so... I'm, I've got the Wikipedia page open here, and I'm like, I don't get, remember half of this shit, but so what I... Re I'm gonna just walk you through what I remember. Excellent. So, the first episode of the anime, it, like, opens up, and there's, like... You know that you know when you see like a scene in a film where it's clearly like five guys in the abandoned building doing drugs. That classic yes. scene in every. Are film. they wearing T-shirts that say "I am not a drug dealer"? <laughs> <Not> a drug <laughs> dealer. Well, no, no, they bought the drugs. Not they using. bought the drugs. Do, do any of them look like uh, Drake or David? Probably. I don't know. <laughs> they look like the anime versions of Drake and David. I keep wanting to say Drake and Josh. <laughs> say David and Drake. Why? Then. <laughs> David and Drake. Yeah, so, David. David and Drake. So David. So there's like, so there's like, four or five guys in this like abandoned building, and they're like, "Did you get one of them?" One of them says to the others that just walks in, he's like, "Did you get the goods?" And he's like, "Yeah." And so then he opens his bag, and it's like, books of like soft erotica, like Ooh. not <laughs> like the porn the mag stashes you'd find in the woods. <laughs> Yeah, except none of... It's not, like, porn porn. It's... The best way I can describe it is... I've never actually read Playboy, but I imagine it's, like, issues of Playboy. Yeah, yeah. It's not, mm. like... It's not too sexy. But it's just enough it's sex. just the right it's, amount. It's, it's, it's just... like they're showing a bit of ankle. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's girls in sexy underwear, I think is what it is. Damn it. So, the... How <laughs> 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 and I wanted ankles. <laughs> I mean, you can see their ankles as well, Matt, but... Yeah, but it's not the same when they're only just showing it beneath trousers or dresses. Okay, Crusader, calm down. They didn't print my request. <laughs> so there's... So there's... Send the me guy. ankle pins. <laughs> cut, cut to Matt tripping in public so you can just look at feet with no one judging him. <laughs> oh no, I can't get up. What can I do? <laughs> Jesus. Oh. So there's so there's these like four or five guys just looking over this, er this erotica and like I can't remember what one of them says but he says pick a corner something what pick a corner uh, it might corner any corner <laughs> he, he says something like I, I forget, I'm trying to remember what Is it he like says. a double entendre or something they mate uh yeah but he actually says custom the way what happens is like he says like a specific word, which is like what they consider banned. And I should also specify that this is this is technically a dystopia where like everyone wears these collar things that monitor. Well, they don't monitor everything you say; they just detect when you say dirty words. Like mud. So, like, he... <laughs> Soil. No, no, Matt. Like dick. <laughs> This just makes me think of just soul with sign language. Just go around grin at people. Just like signing dick, dick, dick over and over again. And no oh, oh no, they thought about that. They also <laughs> apparently... 
<laughs> they apparently also read hand gestures, so you can't draw dirty. Th and that is a that is a plot device that comes in later on. Oh, uh, what if someone begins to say the word dictionary but gets interrupted? Uh, yeah, yeah. Did it like well, a it... five second pause before it activates? <laughs> Oh God! Yeah, because there's a well, there's a, that's also a, a scene that they do as well. But I'll get to that anyway. So I don't like the fact they put so, so much thought into this. <laughs> it's a dystopia, well, Matt. It doesn't just come from nothing. <laughs> so, like, one of them says this censored word, or this like what he's not allowed to say, and then like the rest of them are like, you said that, you said that word, you're not allowed to say it. Then like all the colors go off, and then like. A fucking SWAT team comes in through the windows and starts like just. How close by were they? They are like, heavily prepared. Th this the shots. There's just SWAT they're, teams on every building. The the like shots of like them in the building and then like the SWAT team moving into place and stuff. Things yeah. they're like tipped off about this whole thing. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. Tip off about erotica guys. But by the way, th these guys are called the Decency Squad. <laughs> oh, oh, I, want, I really like the Decency Squad. squad. <laughs> <laughs> I want to join. Sounds great. That is a wonderful name. Oh, you young rambunctious young teen! How dare you say such words? <laughs> so yeah, they like they break it. They like come in. They like arrest all of the guys for having po uh, po possession of dirty manga. And then like for the most over the top part about it is that they pile all the erotica in like a corner, and two guys with flamethrowers come out and burn it. Must purge it with fire. <laughs> burn the heresy. <laughs> There's only I, one yeah. thing that can stop dirty pictures. Fire. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do. I declare exterminatus upon this filth. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then we cut to our main protagonist, who I was like, I'm trying to look up his name on the wiki because I actually don't. I remember one character's name, and that's because her name is Anna. <laughs> wow, easy to remember. <laughs> I, that's what I'm gonna say. Like, there's all Same these Japanese names, forward. and then there's Anna. Andrew, but yeah. I will get, I will get to Anna in a bit because who fucking boy, what a character she is. <laughs> so we cut to our main protagonist, uh, Tanukichi Okuma, and they make a point about Tanukichi because one of the other characters says it's like Tanuki. You know about it because of the huge bollocks, and he's like, uh, okay, <laughs> you were named after the Tanuki. I know about the Tanuki from Mario. Not, do you not remember when he had the big bollocks on his tanuki suit? <laughs> it is a thing. Do, do you want me to ruin it for you? Uh, Tom Nook's a tanuki in Animal Crossing. Oh, person. no! <laughs> that does explain his gigantic grass balls. <laughs> Tom Nook, tanuki. That's yeah. why he's head of the raccoon mafia. He's got the biggest balls of all. Yeah. Tanukis are cool, they're little raccoon dogs, then. They're cool things. They're very frugal with their money, but yeah. I demand more to... bells! The balls of a tax evader. More bells for the bell lord. <laughs> so we cut to our main protagonist. He's go he's, go he's going to school and he's like getting ready to like sit like entrance exams to get into like high school, basically. Because you have to sit exams to get into school for Jap Japan. Yeah, yeah. For the good ones, anyway. And I, I, I didn't even hear from the one I went to. just ones. Yeah, the prestigious ones. So he's like sat there and he's like doing this whole internal monologue. He's like, I need to like get into the school because I want to be reunited with this Anna girl. So and they they touch upon that later on, but basically I I can like say this now. Basically like this the um, one of this kid's parents was um arrested for also being trying to rebel against the dystopian like uh <laughs> Sexual oppression? Yeah. His dad got arrested yeah. for... Yeah. His dad... No, uh, the, the main kid. And that yeah. caused him to get ostracized by the people. And, like, Anna was, like, one of the few people that, uh. like, went to, like, acknowledged his presence and, like, didn't shun him. Yeah, she would exist. So he, yeah. And so he's like, I need to be reunited with Anna. The Japanese don't like to shun at a moment's notice. They t do they uh, do like the Nabu, Nabu thing from Mighty Boosh where they just turn, them, oh, oh, turn, turn, turn my back you. on you and just do... <laughs> no! <laughs> so, uh. long story short, he gets into this school and he's going in on his first day and he sees this, like, giant behemoth of a student, like, just, like, staring at him. <laughs> oh, he is important. Uh, which one is he? It's not that one. Good use of the word behemoth. 
Indeed. Well, like Excellent most work. people compare him. <laughs> yes. Most of the other cats compare him to like built like a gorilla. So that's how like. Anyone else he is. just imagining oh. a gorilla in a suit? I was yeah, imagining Donkey Kong. <laughs> I've been teased about that lately at work, so I don't want to get versus that. Tanuki Mario in my mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> big ball Tanuki. <laughs> anyway, there's a there's a he's on the train and this like big guy is like staring at him from across the train and then like a, <laughs> yeah don't don't it what kind of stare are we talking <laughs> like angry stare like that stare that john's doing but but yes. with more wide the people eyes can't, yeah the people can't and more gritted teeth <laughs> no that's for come on fine. <laughs> anyway so like this is going this is going on in the train and then the woman next to the gorilla guy accuse ac i this is quote she accuses, of, accuses him of touching her glutamus maximus. One second. Oh my god. <laughs> I know what that means. He touched her Roman emperor. <laughs> You're damn right he did. <laughs> so. Behold the mighty glutinous maximus. And it's just a tanuki with big balls. <laughs> <laughs> so. And she's accusing the gorilla of this. But Okuma's sat there looking like, but wait a minute. He was staring at me the whole time. There's no way he could have done this. And so he's like, I need to, like, save this person, even though he's definitely angrily staring at me. So what happens is, like, he goes over during this accusation thing. He's like, excuse me, madam, I'm sorry, but I was the one who was touching your glutamus maximus. But, but he was far away. That, it, he got the long arms. <laughs> the long yeah. arm. He's the long arm of the law. <laughs> anyway, he, the long he arm of the like, decency <laughs> protocol. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, he basically, like, says this and, like, convinces her to get off the train. And she turns around and says, like, I was about to make good money off of that big guy. And he's like, I know you were just bullshitting it. So she calls for the decency squad to come and arrest him. Because, like, he basically admitted to touching her butt in public. Smash cut not, to her. Which he's not allowed to do. <laughs> you mm. must not touch her glutamus maximus. That's so, illegal. I, so, but that's illegal. So... <laughs> So the, so the DCC squad, like, come and try and arrest this guy. And he gets, he's just about to be cornered. When suddenly on the roof of the train building, uh, there's a girl stood there in a towel and underwear. And she's wearing the underwear over her face. She's wearing Anyone what else face? imagining the face max at the start? The girl's of underwear <laughs> over her face. Right, yes. This is Blue Snow, the sexual terrorist. Oh, gosh. F famously renowned sexual terrorist. Mainly because she's in I... a towel with underpants on her face. I feel like I shouldn't Google Blue Snow, as that's probably a euphemism. <laughs> oh my god. It might be, I don't know. I don't know why they call the Blue Snow. Uh, they say don't eat the yellow snow, but it's nothing compared to the Blue Snow. I'm waiting for John's face to just melt <laughs> with whatever images he's found. It's just looking for Blue Snow. <laughs> it's literally just picture images of Blue Snow. I don't... I don't know what to point <laughs> I'm, I'm sure, like, oh, they, in some translations they call her Tundra's Blue, which I don't know if he's any better or worse. Huh. But yeah, she stood on the she stood on the roof of the train station, and all the DCC squad like recognize her obviously because she's the terrorist, and so they try and go towards her, and she's like, "Don't you try and grab me because I'm not wearing anything under this towel, and you don't want to expose all the people on this station to porn to me naked, basically." Huh. And then, like, as she leaves, she, like, throws softcore pictures of erotica everywhere. <laughs> She's just a, a weird, sexy Santa. <laughs> Behold my gifts! <laughs> all the suits in my sack. <laughs> no! <laughs> but before she leaves, she stops in front of our protagonist. She's like, okay, like, I'm distracting him. You need to leave right now. And he's like, yeah, yeah, okay. Basically, like she's providing a distraction for him. You didn't specify what pants, so all I'm imagining is, like, boxes on her head, like in Blackadder. Oh, no, like, girls' <laughs> girls underwear. Oh, well, that's ruined that image, Tom. Go. Oh. <laughs> and she wears, sure like, the bit that goes between your legs pencils, that way up her face. Hmm? What was that? She, she, you know the bit that goes between your legs? She wears that bit up her face. Did, right. <laughs> at, the start of, at the start of the... Um, the current epidemic, just to timestamp this thing. Did any of you guys see that thing where people were wearing underpants on their face as face masks? I yes. didn't. They were all wearing it wrong. They should yeah. wear them like blue snow. Are you Googling? <laughs> what are you Googling now? Blue snow sexual blue terrorist snow. to try and find a picture. <laughs> and hopefully it doesn't go bad. The FBI knocked down your wall. <laughs> the DC squad, squad swings through his window. <laughs> One of them's in his suit of armor and just pops Oh, down. God. <laughs> 
<laughs> Have you seen Blue Snow? Yeah. Are you enlightened? Vaguely. <laughs> <laughs> I can't That's tell good. if he's, like, happy or unhappy because of the light <laughs> on his face. It won't let me click on Google Images. <laughs> it's slowed down. The FBI's hacking in. <laughs> it's okay. like, wait a fucking minute. Seriously. I'm going to send y'all a picture later. But... <laughs> anyway. Uh, so what, what happened to he... Gorilla Guy, by the way? Did he get away? Uh, no, he stayed in the train as the other two got off. Oh. Because they basically, like, rushed her off of the train, and he was about to leave the door shut. And Japan Japanese trains wait for no man. No. Mm. If you get The Bullet doors train. slice you in half if you fail to get on. Well, the, the, there's a thing in Japan where if the trains are, like, more than um, a minute late or something, they give you a note to say, like, sorry, you were late to work, the train was delayed. Yeah, no, it's 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 fantastic compared to... Oh, here. Here. <laughs> yeah. To literally everywhere else, let's yeah. be real. <laughs> Yeah, here they're like, oh, we're sorry, a sheep walked onto the track, so we're going to have to delay this train journey by five hours. Don't worry, the conductor's going to sing a song for you through the announcer, and you're just going to have to sit there and listen to it. I feel like Tom's reliving a repressed <laughs> memory. I might be embellishing some of the details. It was actually Jesus. six hours. <laughs> what, what are you looking at now, John? Shimonetta. <laughs> oh, good. It's fucking hilarious. Uh. Yeah, so he gets to school and they have the morning assembly led by uh, the student council president who he recognizes is the girl he wants to reunite with. Anna. Anna. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as I say, I'll get to her in a fucking minute. Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, I'm looking forward to there's something. To that. There's something weird about that girl. I, I saw a picture. I was like, "There's something fucky with her." I'm not sure. Yep. yep. I can't tell what it is. <laughs> Brace yourself, because hmm. I'm about when I get to that bit. Who boy? She's so... secretly that gorilla man from the train. <laughs> <laughs> no, that they exist as two separate entities. Uh, <laughs> yeah, entities. <laughs> 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 All right, so, no. so he, he, after the assembly, he's like sat in class rewatching the thing because he's just like looking at Anna for some fucking reason, and all the other kids are looking at him and they were like, "Isn't that the kid from the school with the lowest morals?" Because schools are also <laughs> graded on their God. moral standards now in this Japanese dystopia. All right, and the school he's come to is one with the highest morals. I heard someone said fuck there once, and that's basically what. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, Jesus, he's going to get him. <laughs> nope, all these kids are like they have no idea. And to emphasize this point, like no one wants to talk to him. And then there's this girl who literally appears like from under his desk, looking at him between his legs. Oh, like Harry O'Brien earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Harry O'Daniels. Harry O'Daniels. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Oh, it's me, Daniel Daniels. I'm a Japanese schoolgirl now. I am not a medical practitioner, but I know best. <laughs> she God. does wear a lab coat, so if it helps, that. <laughs> Christ. Um... So, she, she, so she like literally like looks appears like under his desk, looks at him like up like between his legs, and is like, "Hey, Mr. Okuma. So I hear you're from the school with the lowest morals." How are babies made? And it's just like... Uh... <laughs> well, we're in step one now. <laughs> well, because, I mean, like, they're brainwashed to give a specific answer. And he's like, well, uh... And he starts, like, giving this off. He's like, no, uh, I, I, I just can't accept that. On a scientific level, I can't accept that. <laughs> uh... Hey! <laughs> yeah. And, and as she's, like, just trying to, like, talk him into, like, giving this, like, bullshit spiel, like, another girl just comes and smacks her on the head. And it's just like, uh, Mr. Okuma? She doesn't, ha she doesn't have that deeper voice. But this other... You got Mr. Okuma. Th th this other girl, uh, Ayame. That's her name. Girl I've got the Wikipedia page open over there, which is why I'm looking. Ayame comes, basically, like, slaps her head and is like... Ayame, hey, I'm the vice I'm the vice principal for the student council. Anna wants to speak to you, and he's like, "Oh hell yeah, I'm going for that." <laughs> not in that, not in those words, but he's like, "Yeah, I'll." I'll oh hell yeah! <laughs> yeah, because the DC is going to be breaking down his door any second. Get him! He said hell. <laughs> I think that one's actually allowed. I'm not entirely sure. Hmm. It's just like sexual words you're not allowed to say. I think so. You can't talk universe. about the second circle of hell. <laughs> 
No. No. Uh, so, oh, you were saying? I do feel bad for people in this universe, partly because, I mean, Japan's population is not going well anyway. And these people don't even know how to make yeah. babies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is real bad. So, so, he goes to the student council meeting, and there is Ayame, uh, Ayame the girl that brought him there. Anna, Voice the lady. Council president, and the gorilla man from the train earlier. <gasps> He's back! Gorilla man! <laughs> I, I'm legit looking at the list of names here, and I'm like, I can't remember which one he was! <laughs> <laughs> we'll just address him as gorilla man, it's fine. Yeah, I honestly okay. did not think he would come back, I thought he was going to be a one-off. No, he, he's part of the student council train. as well. So, Anna basically, like, asks him, um... <laughs> Are you, are you looking for pictures? I, I found a picture of him and he's just fucking... <laughs> he's got sideburns! Yep. <laughs> Child! Yep. <laughs> oh, God. So, oh. Anna basically asks him to be like their... To join the student council and be like their... I, I want to say like something like their internal affairs manager or something. And he's like, okay, but why do you want me? I'm from the school with the lowest morals. She's like, well... To be fair, we've had a few run-ins with Blue Snow recently, and uh, like no one knows who it is, so we're trying to work out who Blue Snow is. And you're probably the best person to spot an innuendo. Is Anna Blue Snow? No. Oh god, no. I guess it's... I, I was thinking along those lines. What about <laughs> Deep Voice Lady? The Deep... The, what? The, the Vice... The Vice... Yes. The, yeah, she's Blue Snow. Oh! Yeah! <laughs> She's like, okay, um, Ayame will give you the details later. So she takes him to this, like, cafe after school, and she's like, that was a brilliant bullshit speech you gave about wanting to impress Anna. <laughs> and he's like, wait a minute. So, and then she takes her hair out, and he's like, wait a minute. You're that fucking sexual terrorist. I can see the boxes on your head. <laughs> she actually puts them on. <laughs> she, like, lets her hair down and puts the underwear on, and she's mm -hmm. just like, wait a minute, you're Blue Snow. <laughs> Nobody knew who I was till I put oh. on the mask. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, they're sat at this cafe, and he tries to call the decency squad just to rat her out. And then, like, the the manager of the cafe comes over. He's like, "So, can I take your order?" He's like, "You know, she's a sexual terrorist, right?" He's like, "Yeah." So, what can I get you? <laughs> We're all sexual like, terrorists here. This is the sexual terrorism cafe. Didn't you see the yeah. sign? <laughs> we all jack down. Would here. you like to try some buns? <laughs> Would you like some Jack Daniels? <laughs> Some Jack Daniel. <laughs> so basically, like, things ensue, and basically, she basically bullshits him into, instead of helping Anna find the sexual terrorist, she involves him into also helping her commit acts of sexual terrorism. And together, they form the group Socks. Socks. And they. S O X. Oh, so, oh okay. <laughs> because the O looks like a Japanese censorship circle. Ah. Is the, the example they give. So, when do we also, find out like what's to... weird about Anna? Uh, oh, I, I can run that through with you, but I would just also want to cover a few of the incidences and examples of terrorism that they cause. Indeed. Okay. Other than throwing around softcore erotica, <laughs> which happens a lot, oh. I'd like to point out. I'm imagining like tiny pamphlets, <laughs> like how to wiki how guides. <laughs> They're like. They're like A6 pieces of A6, A5 pieces of paper that she just like throws around, like card sized. Just flicking them out like Gambit. Yeah. Oh. They're actually so... cards you can collect and trade if you get enough of them. <laughs> I've got the full set. Hey, I've got, I've got... a drawing of a dick. What have you? What I've have got you toes. Got? <laughs> God, is. Does anyone have ankles? <laughs> me, me. I, I, I found the big guy. His name's uh, Raiki Gariki. And Gariki, I think, is so fucking close to Gorilla. I think yeah. they might have actually just called him Gorilla. <laughs> like, it's, he's 17. <laughs> but he looks like. I'm going I'm to put this picture in the, in, in, in the, in the chat real quick because this is horrifying. Uh, if I can copy it. Yep. <laughs> Really terrified. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> so, after his run in with Blue Snow, he wakes up the next. Well, he wakes up the next day and he goes to school. And basically, he gets cornered by the scientist girl again, who I believe her name is Hyoka Fuwa. Is that her? Yeah, the scientist one. Fuwa. Mm -hmm. She basically, like, collars him and is like, so to continue our conversation from yesterday, I believe. <laughs> I believe that. 
I believe that the key to reproducing uh, making babies is to do with body melding. <laughs> That's it. Go on. And he's like, and like, um, what evidence are you basing this off? And then she's like, well, I have these two flies. Now, and just before they create eggs, they go through this ritual thing of body melody. She opens the cage and like the t just the two flies are fucking. Oh, and I. <laughs> I believe humans do something similar to this. He's like, they're flies, you fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, she's right. She is. <laughs> Wait, so has our protagonist been indoctrinated into the theory that isn't that? No, oh no, he knows he about knows, it because right, okay, of what yeah. his dad did. He, back in he the came day. from the low moral school. What, the sex. Yeah, he knows about. The well, his sex. dad was also a sexual terrorist. I, I'll just throw this out there: his dad got arrested for yelling obscenities and throwing condoms all over the um the Senate building. Cool. <laughs> so artistic. <laughs> Do you reckon they're going to bring the literally he, he, bring he, the birds and the bees into this? I I think the speech he ritually yelled was "free the dick, free the pussy, and free oppression" or something, and then yelled "throw condoms all over the building." I feel like that's just part of a Team America sequel. It pro his dad was probably part of Team America, <laughs> which is why he's got this strong sense of freedom. Indeed. <laughs> and anyway, so uh. he tells. I'm gonna call her Blue Snow because it's just easy about this. So he's like, so he's like, so why did you recruit me to this thing, Blue Snow? He's like, well, so you're the son of the famous sexual terrorist, right? He's like, I tried to leave that behind, and live a normal life. I should also point out that um, for three minutes, this is very loose. I don't know how they get away with this, but apparently for three minutes a day, Blue Snow can get away with yelling obscenities and like fallacies. Because, like, she was given a flip phone by her dad, and if she calls a specific number on the flip phone, because it's ancient technology, it interferes with the signal of her right. thing around her neck. Huh. So they can't pick up the vulgar words. And he was like, wow, your dad's a great thing. He's like, yeah, my dad got arrested. My, they framed my dad for, like, fucking a schoolgirl. And they, he basically got arrested. <laughs> He's like, oh, well, that's grim. He's like, yeah, my dad would never do that. How do you know? My dad's into G-MILFs. Okay, great parenting. <laughs> great parenting right there. <laughs> <laughs> you picked the wrong target, my friend. <laughs> it's like... Can you see why I was sat watching this at two in the morning and going, I'm slightly fucking delusional. <laughs> I just, I looked at the summary of an episode. It was horrifying to me. <laughs> oh. no. uh, I will, I will ask which one. Did I it give you a number? Uh, it... it just like literally, I clicked on it. It was like a review of it. It's like okay, so I watched this. Whatever the fuck this thing is. <laughs> It's like, you still look here. scarred. Yeah, this girl, she's annoying now. She's annoying here now, but then she also turns out to be a, another sexual terrorist. So she gets a, a water balloon, so fills them with cream, throws at police officers, and asks them how they like their facials. And at, oh this, point, the, and the, and, and at this point, the squirt men turn up. And it's like, what the fuck? And it's just like, excuse me. Not the squirt excuse me. me. I told you the show was amazing. <laughs> Because, uh, please, for the love of God, audience, do not Google Shimonetta squirt men. It's going to go bad. <laughs> I never. I only watched like six of the episodes. I can't remember the squirt men. I, th I think it's my bad episode. <laughs> you might have repressed that memory. <laughs> Probably. Uh, but, but, uh, but for Matt's benefit, I put the picture of the gorilla guy in, in the chat. Oh, goody. <laughs> well, I'm just waiting to see every action. That this. man oh, okay, is no, 17? <laughs> Why are his pecs so big? <laughs> well, he built his fuck, man. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. He, he looks like a fucking 18th century gentleman has just stepped out from the past. <laughs> it, it looks very I much am like an ordinary 17-year-old boy. How do you do, fellow I'm kids? Completely normal. <laughs> Does anyone know where the drugs are? Can I score some <laughs> drugs? Oh, go oh, take God. to Drake. He knows where they are. <laughs> oh, God. But yeah, so... As I was saying about these flies, so he like brings up, he's like, why don't you ask the scientist girl? She seems eager to learn. She's like, she's fucking weird. I'm like, and then he's like, well, yeah, she's basically studying this. She's basically watching two flies body meld, as she calls it. And then Blue Snow's like, I can use this. <laughs> <laughs> and so the, the whole, like, so at the next, like, student assembly, what they do is like, they, lo um, they like drop the softcore erotica pamphlets to like basically like this is a terrorist incident and then because blue snow is pretty good friends and vice count vice principal and for some reason Anya doesn't suspect a thing 
She doesn't think her best friend <laughs> slash vice whatever. You know when you put those underpants on your head, you look remarkably like that sexual terrorist. <laughs> but it well, couldn't also, be you. She wears her hair differently. She has it in like ponytails, in twin tails. All right. Which, uh, yeah. So, like, she basically, like, tells Anna and the other two, she's like, Anna, this is a diversion. She's, like, out somewhere else. So they all run off. And then what Blue Snow does is she she basically, like, takes footage of the flies fucking, puts it big on the screen, and starts doing sexy noises over the top. Okay, I, no, no, I, I generally thought they were just going to broadcast this across, like, a school or something broadcast like that. I didn't realize they were going to broadcast the exact Dur- thing, During the school assembly. Noises. That's great. <laughs> Yeah, that's what she did, basically. What was the assembly about beforehand? Like, bullying? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and remember, like, kids, don't give in to peer pressure, and this is why, oh my god, what is... <laughs> this is what happens if you give in to peer pressure. <laughs> but it's just the kind of thing where it's like, would people even recognise an innuendo anymore? If, and if they don't, the, what's no, so bad about little- it? There's literally a point in the second episode where they were like, okay, so here's the next thing we're going to do. We're going to pin up, like, dirty pictures on the school and, like, just, like, places where people would see them. And there's literally a scene where, like, there's... They're in the student council room and Anna's talking about something. She's like, I found this picture earlier so, and she's framed it and put it on the wall. And it's like, Anna, you do realize that's, like, a dirt, one of the dirty images you mentioned earlier. It's like, really? All I see is a guy, girl eating a mushroom. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's like freaking out, and then Blue Snow's just sat at the other side, just like. Fuck. <laughs> 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 oh. But right. yeah, I-, I wanted to mention Anna because Anna is fucking something else in this show. So. She's fucking in... something else. Well, is it a fly? She's... No, she's fucking someone. I'll give you that. Uh, so is it, is it a fly? Around... Jeff Goldblum? <laughs> um. <laughs> I mean, I, I, when I look at various images and stuff like that, I would describe Anna as thick, I suppose, which is worrying to me. Oh, yeah, she's thick. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, but as I was saying, so around, like, the third episode, it's, like, revealed that she has a stalker. So they basically devise this plan where um, the school council are going to help, like, catch this stalker, basically. So they agree for, um, what's her face, Blue Snow, to, like, pretend to, like, dress up as a boy and go out on a date with her. And then, like, the gorilla man was like, well, why don't I do that? Because if you go, they're going to be too fucking scared to try and jump me (laughs) on a date with Anna. (laughs) (laughs) Basically, like, their plan was to, like, convince the stalker that she was on a date with another boy and that would, like, lure him out of hiding to, like, bot to, like, come and, like, interfere with it. I don't fucking know. That was a plan. We did have one. It, and to be fair, it succeeds because there's a there's a moment where like all of them they're like all in the park try, and then like the stalker tries to attack Blue Snow, and then the protagonist like he like runs into like punch the guy, but he and he does, but then he also gets like clocked around the face as well, and he lands on top of Anna. Oh dear. Like in the in the typical like yep. a way you would expect like <laughs> yeah just, also just like classic. because he got because he got sort of knocked out he, like their mouths connected so like they were like kissing and then like he All wakes right. up and he's just like oh god I'm sorry what have I done and Anna is starts acting a bit fucking weird <laughs> and then uh, when you well, say she starts weird. avoiding him to start with but then like he starts getting stalkery notes as well oh dear. <laughs> And so Is she a... her own stalker? Who stalks no, the like stalker? No, like she starts stalking him. No, no, yes. She starts stalking the protagonist. <laughs> so, she this starts... is getting... so she's got a stalker and she starts stalking the protagonist. Well, no, the stalker like fucks off after the like all... like a stalker like... conga line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it gets worse. <laughs> I must like... go, but another must take my place. <laughs> Because <laughs> he goes to Blue Snow and he's like, I've been get- I don't know if I can keep up with these things. Like, you're getting cold feet. He's like, no, I've been getting, like, stalker. Like, someone's okay. stalking me. And he, like, shows her a letter. She's like, is this drool on the bottom of the paper? <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh, it gets worse. Oh, wait no. T- wait till I talk to you about what happens next. The borderline. <laughs> the 
the borderline rape that happens. I s ooh, oh, oh god, no. can, 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 can we can, touch on this or should we just dance around this topic? I will dance around it and say that basically Anna what? tries to sexually assault him because like she's so innocent that she doesn't can't distinguish the difference between love and lust. Oh shit, we, do we, it. I just realised in this, in this world they haven't taught consent, have they? Yeah. The whole, there is no oh, sex no. in this world. Oh, this is a problem. Uh, in, also, uh, like, I, I, I didn't mention this, but Anna's mother is like one of the people trying to push for like stronger uh, laws, like for permanently monitored conversations and things like that. Aren't they already permanently monitored? No, uh, no they only detect if you say bad words. Gotcha. Yeah. Whereas, like, they would be able to actually listen on Blue Snow and protagonists right. who are actually talking yeah. about their terrorism. Yeah. So no, don't like... solve this a notepad. <laughs> <laughs> I told you they they get the things where they can connect connect what you're connect co Wait, detect so, what you're drawing. Oh God. So how yeah. how would Anna know that she had a stalker if she can't tell that she's stalking him? Oh no, she was getting like creepy letters and shit. But she hasn't she she genuinely had that, a... she hasn't clocked on that doing that to the protagonist is exactly the same thing. No. No, because this is love. She oh, hasn't connected with it. This is, it out. This is the love. purest and best way to show your emotions. <laughs> Clearly, that's where I've been going wrong. That is... I mean, it's pretty dark, but I haven't told you about her love nectar cookies. Go on. <laughs> Sorry. So, like, after after this whole incident, she basically, like, tries to apologize to him. She's like, I made you some cookies, and, like, I made... They have me in them. <laughs> no, you, you, you hit on the head. You hit the nail on the head. Yeah. There, <laughs> She's like, I don't understand it, but when I'm close to you, I kind of get... Something happens to my lower abdomen. Oh, good God. <laughs> Christ. This was and hilarious, it, and it but now it's taking this... a downward turn. Yanderays <laughs> both make and ruin everything. When a Yanderay enters the fray, everything becomes dark. This poor protector's like, oh, I'm gonna fucking die. And just, yeah, that's... Oh, thank God, this person who, who there's, didn't there's ostracize me is in the same school as me. Oh, God. <laughs> there's a so... scene afterwards where they were like, um, he was talking to Blue Snow, he's like, Anya is a bit fucking mad now. And then Anya literally appears from nowhere with a pair of scissors and he's like, you two are awfully close recently. <laughs> I just, just like she holds the scissors up to Blue Snow's neck and is just like, just remember, it's like he came to me for advice on how to approach you because he thought you didn't like him. He's like, oh okay, just remember, he's mine. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, I've got oh, to boy. say, I just, I just love the idea of the protest. Like, listen, Blue Snow, just uh, the sexual terrorist thing is great and all, but I feel like I'm probably going to die doing this, and after I die, she will violate my corpse. <laughs> So I don't want this to happen. <laughs> I always thought it would be the decency squad that got me. <laughs> not, not Anna. You never oh, see and there's like, there's a whole, there's like a whole thing. Is like when Anna is put her mind to something, like she goes to it because there's like a scene where like he he's doing the pretending to be Blue Snow and trying to get with, with sexual terrorism, and there's a scene of her chasing him through the school. And like she just like vaults all of the stairs. Oh jeez. Uh, she's, oh, she's like she's been uh, known to show superhuman qualities. Oh crap! Have I got? Have I, I just realised I'm not sure if I've actually uh, done anything to my search history on this. So it's just going to be Shimonetta Squirtman on my computer. Yep. <laughs> Which the first yeah, result no, of that was actually the actual like, what? thing I was looking for. The second one was just porn. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, I would say, I, I'd say there's the the art skill that they have to learn to teach to draw by actually just using a paintbrush in her mouth. And then there's the another great work. scene where like they're trying to work out how to ram raid this private land because someone buried a stash of like actual pornography. Not the there we porn there we have the porn in the wood trap <laughs> right there. Yeah. <laughs> and there was like, so how do we convince like so like if we go, the DCC squad will recognize us and arrest us all. But if we can somehow convince all the students to do a siege on the land. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I don't, I forget exactly what happens, but he ends up leaving all the details like in a different room and the, the scientist girl finds it and she's just like, I will make it my mission to find this stuff. <laughs> and then so she leads the army of students as they descend upon this wood trying to search for the pawn. God. <laughs> Like the others are, she's uh -huh. like stood at the front in front in like a wheelbarrow, and the others are like pushing yeah. her along, and the, and the horde is behind her. I, I feel like it wasn't a thing in our generation as such, just because the internet and stuff. But I feel like people 
generations before us did actually go, go looking for the woods to find porn, and oftentimes they did actually find it. Yeah, it's a joke, and I really think it must have been a me. thing. Yeah, it. No, I, 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 yeah, I, I, I know for a fact it was a thing at one point. I've never, I've never encountered it, but I know for a fact it's that's happened. You're There's the one no burying the porn in the woods. <laughs> yeah. There are no woods in Doncaster for me to search, so. <laughs> I mean, if you did, it'd just be I bodies. Dredge the river. Oh. Dredge the river for porn. <laughs> it's going to be damp and not because of the water. Sift through it, see what comes up. <laughs> anyway, that was Shimonetta. Oh my god. Wow. I, that. I would give it probably seven and a half octopus sausages out of ten. That, that's pretty high rating. <laughs> I, I'm generally If you're not to watch easily it. offended. <laughs> If you're not easily offended, this stuff is arguably hilarious. Yeah. My curiosity has been peaked just out of the sheer ludicrousness of it. You said that last week, yeah. but you still didn't watch oh. Kaguya Sama. Tom, can I, I what, kind of, what kind of tone does this go? Is it like on the nose kind of humorous or is it like deadly serious? Oh no, it takes itself. It doesn't take itself seriously. It, in its nose. Uh, hold on, I got. Uh, if I just open Funimation, I can tell you what else the direct uh, the staff made it. I know they definitely made Is It Wrong to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon. Which you have said is good before, I think. I enjoyed Is It Wrong to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon. It's just fucking dumb. I've been <laughs> recommended it on Netflix, but I've yet to watch it. Yeah. Oh, they also made Food Wars. Oh, is that the one where the food's so good yeah. their clothes blow off? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like these guys. <laughs> <laughs> They made Food Wars Shokugeki no Soma as well. So yeah, they, they know what they're doing. This is this is all just a giant meme. <laughs> Please, we, we got this. Well, that brings mm. us to the end. Fingers crossed, we were shorter mm. than last week. Uh, mm. John, do you want to... Wanna... I was going to say, this week at least my section was bigger than Tom's. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey. Now, now, let's not measure sizes. <laughs> <laughs> the Otherwise, the tank tank spot will be here in no time. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot. If you, if you, if I piqued your curiosity, it's on Funimation. Mm. Hey, yes. Well, John, would... as always, do you want to round us out with a unsettling fact or proverb? Proverb. Proverb is with fiction. Uh, a poltergeist can touch, but it can never truly feel. Good night.